Let's return to This Week in America. Here's your host, Rick Bratton. Welcome back, everybody. Coast to Coast, This Week in America. Darkness Before the Dawn by Charles Gates Jr. is where it all began with his harrowing, harrowing journey. Let me go back to that. Something jumped here that I caught my eye, and I think we're, we're okay. Okay, that settled down. Here we go. Three, two, one. Welcome back, everybody. Coast to Coast, This Week in America. Darkness Before the Dawn by Charles Gates Jr. is where it all began with his harrowing journey to find faith, not knowing what dawn was. He believed there was a deeper reason behind the mechanics of the events of his life that seemed almost orchestrated. He would often tell himself there must be a reason for the course my life has taken. A story with a thick plot like mine must lead somewhere. Now, in his quest for truth, for the light he believed would wash away all his wanderings and bring healing to his soul, Charles ran into many challenges, was even betrayed, nearly killed. In his book of poetry, he gives a voice to every echo of his heart that came back with only more questions, and he highlights the events of his life that led to the tipping point in his spiritual journey. Charles Gates, Jr., author of Darkness Before the Dawn, joins us on This Week in America. Charles, welcome to the program. It's great to have you with us. Thanks for having me, Rick. It's a pleasure to be here. I am looking forward to, I love what you've done with the poetry, the introspection you have, really looking forward to talking about it. What was the inspiration for you to take these feelings that you had and and write about them in poetry form? What was the, the inspiration for your book? Well, well Rick, uh, when I f- first started writing, I didn't know what I was doing. Quite honestly, I just, I, I knew I had this burning inside of me that felt like it was de- uh, eating me from the inside out. And I didn't know where, which way to direct it. I, I didn't know what to do with it. But I, I know that it was eating me alive. And uh, one day I or several days, I, I don't know when exactly, uh, w- or what uh, caused, pushed, caused or pushed me to uh, pick up the pen and just start writing, but that, that's what I did. I started uh, writing down uh, what came to my heart. I started writing down my feelings, and uh, it, it was more uh, musical at first, uh, with because my poetry stems from the hip hop bar system and all that, but I just needed a way to direct my po- my feelings, and it it became poetry. And it, I sometimes I would write for twelve hours a day, just in in my house, and I would just pour down out everything that I, I was going through, and it's been a journey. <laughs> Well, yeah, yeah, the book we're talking about is Darkness Before the Dawn by Charles Gates Jr., our guest on the program. I'll give you information on his website. You'll find him on Facebook. You'll find the book available at Amazon, all of that. So how did the personal struggles affect your poetry? It sounds like they, they really shaped what you were writing about, your feelings at the time. Yeah, they helped uh, me find my voice. They helped me uh, find a direction uh, to go with my uh, poetry, and they they increased uh, my passion. The thing that was burning inside of me uh, wasn't only my pain, but it was passion for the things that I was going through, and for uh, the motivator of my dr- for my dreams that uh, really gave gave me the drive to. Uh, put it in a way that I could understand. And so I took my personal struggles and I wrote, I made poems about them. I just wrote, wrote what was in my heart. And uh, when, when it came time to put it in a book, uh, I just rearranged the poems and they flowed together like a story from the beginning of the book to the end of the book. But I was going through a lot of things during that time. It was a very dark area of my life, uh, filled with much sorrow and grief. Uh, I lost my nephew. My nephew died, and then two months later, my uh, my the, my daughter died. Um, she was still in the womb, so it was miscarriage. But that really uh, catapulted me 
into the darkest year of my life. And that comes out of my poetry. It flows out. Yes. It's, yeah. The, the book is so personal. How did it feel when you finally had the published book in your hands? You, all of this that you've poured out, this is a journey that you were on to, to capture those thoughts, to write those thoughts, to publish the book. And there you are for the first time picking up a copy uh, of your book. How, how, how exciting was that? Or what emotions, maybe even more than excitement, what went through you? I felt like uh, I finally did something that was praiseworthy in my life. Uh, when I published my book, that was the first time in my life at the age of 21. That was the first time anyone in my life has ever told me that they were proud of me for something. And that really touched, touched me in a way yeah, that nice. I knew I was making an impact uh, on the world around me, the community around me through something, something that I was going through. My story was uh, affecting uh, other people's lives too, but more import importantly, it was helping me see the value of what I was going through and that that was not wasted. But when I held my book in my hands, I felt such pride and honor that, wow, maybe I do have a purpose. Maybe I, my, there is a direction of my, that my life is headed toward that maybe I don't understand right now, but this is a sign of uh, what this could be. This is a sign of uh, there's something greater for me, for my future. My future looked a little brighter. And uh, I was in a, the local newspaper, and people started recognizing me at, uh, at the store and stuff. And they were, they were uh, I say, oh, it's him. I saw him in the paper. And <laughs> yeah. it really, really brought uh, happiness to me, oh, but yes. it's more than happy, ha happiness. It's just this satisfaction at knowing that uh, my pain could be, uh, could create something so beautiful. And help so many people. That's by sharing your story. There are so many people out there like you and they see hope and inspiration in what you've done with your book, Darkness Before the Dawn, by Charles Gates Jr., our guest on the program. How did the audience react to your book of poetry? What kind of feedback are you getting? Well, uh, when I first published my first book, um, my family and friends uh, were all over it. They were so proud of me. And um, I would go to uh, my, my cousin's house and as soon as I get there, my family would be like, TJ, did you bring your book? TJ is my nickname. Um, they're like, did you bring your book? And I was like, yeah, right here. And I showed them the copy and they would have me recite it and they would recite it to one another and uh, tell, tell me how deeply it affected them, their, uh, their heart and really inspired them. And if it wasn't for my family, uh, and a few close friends, I wouldn't have even published the book. Quite honestly, I didn't want to publish it. I just wanted a way to channel my anger, my emotions, my sadness. I needed a direction to put all that. And this became the channel to where the uh, river can flow out of me. My emotions could flow out of me. And I feel some type of uh, release from my stress. But they found joy in it. And they found encouragement in it. They found edification for their, their soul. And uh, it deeply touched me. But one of the greatest moments in my career is when uh, I was at my one job a, few, a couple years ago. And the word got out that I was a published author. And everybody started requesting my book. Well, one to one day, a couple of days after I sold about 30 copies in, in a shift, uh, one of the housekeepers uh, of where I was working came up to me with tears streaming from her eyes and told me that she could relate to my story, that our stories weren't the same, but that she felt like she was a part of my story. And that's my goal is to incorporate 
those who read my my work, who listen to my words, I want to I incorporate them into the story. Because the truth is, we are all going through something, and we yes. all need encouragement, yes. hope, and inspiration to pass through the darkness. And well, what a great story it, to be able to touch somebody like that, where your words and you really didn't even realize it at the time were taking this person from someplace dark to someplace where they really needed to be. And you gave them the impetus to get there. I mean, those are remarkable stories in, in with the family members and the, in the people at work and so many people that will read darkness before the dawn all around the country, all around the world, you'll never know them and you'll never know the impact you've had on their lives. But it, uh, it's really significant by you deciding to share that story when people read darkness before the dawn, what, what are some of the takeaways that uh, you hope they receive from the poetic story you tell? Well, I hope they find uh, inspiration to uh, chase after their own dreams, to take what uh, was given to them in life and make something beautiful out of it, to make beauty from their ashes, you know? And I, whether that's art, whether that's music, poetry, uh, screenwriting, uh, whether it's just pouring your all of yourself into the, your job profession, whatever that may look like to them, I want uh, to be inspire them to pour everything they are into those things. And that, that's all you can do is just pour yourself in your heart, mind, your, your soul. Well, with emotions. what you've been through, that will, that yeah, that will resonate with people because you've been there. These are not just words you're talking. These are words that reflect yes. your, your inner feelings and what you went through. Our guest on the program is Charles Gates Jr. His website is very simple, charlesgatesjr.com. Books available at Amazon. Go to our website, This Week in America.us, and you can link on to get all the information on Charles' books. Do you have like a, a, a favorite poem? I sort of hate to ask that, but is there one that sticks out that really encapsulates your story? Well, Rick, um, asking me to choose a favorite poem is like a mother asking, uh, being asked to choose which child is their favorite. Oh, yes, yes. Because each one was birthed in a different place of my life and uh, they they each packed their own punch and tell a, a deep uh, heroic story of overcoming and triumphing over the cares of his life. Would but, you, yes, go ahead. There is one, one poem okay. from the first book that really resonates with where I was during my journey. Uh, the central point of that a specific part of my journey that I believe the, the reader may have a better understanding of my mindset at the time. Would you mind reading that? Would that be possible? Yes, sir. I'd love to. Uh, it's, the name of the poem is My Own Hell by Charles Gates Jr. <clears throat> my soul is scattered in scars because my hell is dark. This is a trail I have chosen to walk. My mind is a cell that is used to stop. All the pain and suffering I tried to block. I pulled the trigger, but the gun was locked. Now it's not. Now it's cocked. I clogged the holes in my heart like a blood clot. Still the blood drops. The walls are falling on top of my emotions and the curtains that expose them. I swear the gun was loaded. I dove into a sea of sharks to drown my thoughts. But they always flow to the surface in their teeth and jaws. I always have a thought to chew on. It's dark and it claws me. I'm bruised and marks cover my body. Where is everybody? I abused my sanity because he wasn't there for me when I couldn't keep my wits about me. It's always a battle of the mind or of the heart to me. It's blasphemy. When did it start? Why does life have to be so hard? I count my cards but always come up short. I took what I had and laid them on a table for display. I gambled my soul and lost my way. I should have just walked away. They caught me with a hook. They used my favorite flavor of sin as bait. They played me like a game, like a machine. I obeyed. My blood pours forth, and they take all that remains. Take me to my new home beneath the earth so deep, swimming through the lake of magma and dreams. Life is a nightmare. 
bullet schemes. I led by the sword because I was forced to fight. I had to follow the dark in order to find the light. I write a page of blood as I express my mind because I view the world through my heart's eye. I drive down the road of insanity, crosses bridges of despair and agony, giving away my heart, hoping it'll fly back to me. And if it doesn't, then I know that it was devoured by crows as it took away of my soul. I watch my body fall down in black hole inside the cracks of my bones. Hell is all I've known. This is the hell of my own making, where I'm the king who forsook everything and took it for granted. This life of sin is my treasured luxury. I swallowed a band-aid, but it didn't stop the bleeding. Now my heart is flooding through the cracks of my coffin as my veins water the earth's surface. I'm plummeting into my sarcophagus, thirsting for my purpose. Dirt watering the door of my tomb, in a closed room, no sound. But a slowly beating heart, this heart is not my own. It's the beating of the walls where her name is carved. My spine is broken and I can't walk. So they plead for me to crawl. I'm crawling with blood on my knees. I'm climbing over the stones life throws at me. I'm sorry, mother, but I was told I could fly. I'm soaring somewhere through the sky, falling from their heights. I can no longer speak. My spirit has died. This is how it must end. This is goodbye. So well done and, and so powerful to imagine that you were in, how long of, of time did it take you to write that? Uh, I was sort of thinking of reflection on where you were in your life at that time. How, over what period of time did that, did that transpire? Um, how long it took me to write it? Um, a lot of the poetry in my first book, uh, I wrote most of them in a day uh, each. Yes. Sometimes yes. I would write six in a day. So it, it all varies. But when that, when I wrote that, I was, uh, I broke, my girlfriend and I broke up, broke up. Um, I found out she was very deceptive and that she was playing a lot of mind games with me. And it really made me feel like I was, I was, I was taken advantage of emotionally oh, yes. and, uh, it really put me in a place where I felt like everybody around me was just not there. Like they were there, but they, they weren't rooted around me, you know, like they, so I felt betrayed. Well, yes. And, and yes. all of this and, comes out in, in Charles work. The book we're talking about specifically is darkness before the dawn by Charles Gates, Jr. But time is going by so quickly. Uh, a few more Areas I really want to talk about. You've mentioned other books as well. Have you written other books? And, and tell us about those. Yeah, I wrote a novel uh, called From Darkness to Light, A Sinner's Memoir. Um, that one uh, is a, it is the, an actual novel. It's not, it's a me the memoir of my testimony of faith, but it's written in a form that, really puts you in the story and it really shows you from beginning to end how uh how i found myself in that place and uh in that book i'm it shows shows me like uh pouring out poetry uh and end up writing publishing a book in in the book and it's the way it intertwines uh <clears throat> with uh my poetry is unreal it's beautiful adequate so there is a connection between the poetry and ties into your novel and i want to talk about the first book you you spoke about the dawn after the darkness the second book the novel you spoke about transitioning from darkness to light is the light and the dawn the same to you yes rick um in in a way uh they are uh, I, the dawn to me at that time in my life was a hope of what was to come, but spiritually speaking, I did not know what was to come. I just knew that, uh, the dawn comes after the darkness. If my life was, if there's this much impending darkness over me, looming over me, I know that something, uh, grand, uh, is on the horizon and, uh, it's it came with uh, such a 
uh, bright light in my life. And I didn't know it at the time, but my book of poetry was actually my, my spiritual journey of how I put my faith in Jesus. And it was my, uh, my, uh, poetry was used to, uh, lead me to that point in my life where I had to make a decision of letting go of my hopelessness and my darkness and, uh, stepping into this light. And, uh, when I did step into the, that light, uh, it illuminated the world around me, it completely shifted my perspective on on the world. And that comes out in my other poetry, which has not yet been published. Um, I will be publishing a nut, uh, uh, more books of poetry. But, um, okay. Yeah, so it ties into that. So the From Darkness to Light is... Um, the first half is when uh, the part of my where I am in my first book, and uh, like the last half is transitioning me to the next phase of my life. We're rapidly running out of time, but if you you don't mind, I would like one more poem. You do such an excellent job in the writing and the recitation of those. Do you have another poem you could share with us? Yes, I do. I, this one is called "The Dying Rose" by Charles Gates Jr. Life came, camouflaged its death, a spark igniting within my chest with compassion that couldn't be bottled. I drew my last breath and I stepped forth from the shadows, from the waters as shallow as a stone's throw, to the deepest of hollows that I wallowed within my soul. A light shone in the darkness that I thought would swallow me whole, and I saw love overcome violence. As a voice spoke in silence, I found myself in defeat, in the battles that overshadowed me, my lips have practiced deceit, and the web of lies that were spun from the cave of my own tongue have snatched me from my feet, that I thought to move so swiftly, while all it took was genuine love and an embracing hug for my walls to crash around me. As the fires burned the life they stole, I embraced the unknown, inside my heart of coal, as it shatters with the old, only to return warm and whole. A new name was carved on a white stone from the light of growth. I bloomed from the dying rose. You do such an excellent job in writing and in the recitation and performing. I, where are the books available? I mentioned your website and Amazon. Where's the best place to, to find out about you and to buy your books? Um, that's the whole purpose of me setting up my website is so that people can easily, uh, without stressing over how to find it, so that they can easily access it through Charles Gates, junior.com slash books again that's charles c-h-a-r-l-e-s gates g-a-t-e-s junior j-r slash books and that's all lowercase um if you go to that link you'll find uh my book two both my books uh back to back on there and it has a description of each of those books and it has a buy now button that takes you directly to the Amazon link. And everybody knows how to use Amazon. I don't, I, everybody has right used now. Amazon. Yes, yes. If not, here's a great opportunity to try it out because you'll be uh, uh, very impressed with the work of our Gates, uh, our, Charles Gates Jr., our guest on the program. Uh, before we leave, what do we have to look forward to? I, you do such a nice job in presenting those. Do you do any stage work where you're, you're reciting your poems? Um, actually, I... I've uh, been offered recently to uh, travel uh, a little bit and per start performing my poetry. Uh, I had you might see a couple with uh, that I made at home a couple from a couple of years ago on on YouTube somewhere, <laughs> but I want to make them more professional. So uh, if you look me up on YouTube or even if you go to my Facebook uh, page, facebook.com slash Charles Gates Jr. Um, I will be posting vid spoken word videos on there. Um, I'm recently, I'm actually, right now I'm building a, an in-home studio so that I can create a spoken word album that I will be re releasing with the uh, remastering, remastered version of my first book of poetry. And that I can't give you a time frame on that because I'm still setting up the studio, but my goal is one year from now, it'll be hopefully available. And on top of that, I'm actually designing, in the process of designing my own clothing brand for
for my poetry. It has a, uh, it's a blend of my poetry and the Holy Scriptures to help inspire other people who read it. They find hope in the apparel that you're wearing. And they have my poetry on there and stuff. And it's, I'm very excited for that. Um, I'm also working on other things behind the scenes. Um, I have a lot of goals with my, my work. But I uh, stay tuned to my website. Be, uh, stay connected to my website because I will be post uh, publishing more books. I will be publishing a novel after this one. I will be... Uh, for every area of my life, I'm going to be publishing a novel tell, telling the continuation of my journey. And I will publish poetry alongside those novels so that you can read the poetry and get a deeper understanding of the message being displayed in the novels. So, so it actually, they're deeply rooted together. Boy, there's so much that's going on. The best thing to do is keep track of it at Charles's website, which is charlesgatesjr.com slash books. Books available at Amazon. You can link on directly to Amazon by going to Charles's website. Charles, it's been a pleasure having you on the program. Congratulations on all of the success, mm -hmm. the work you're doing with uh, touching so many people and giving them hope in their lives as you share your story. Uh, you've got so many positive things going on now in your life. Thank you for taking some time and, and sharing with us on the program today. You're welcome, Rick. It has, has been a pleasure speaking to you. It Thank has you been for a pleasure having you. It's, uh, you're welcome. It's been our pleasure to have you with us. The guest on the program is Charles Gates Jr. The book is Darkness Before the Dawn. His website, charlesgatesjr.com slash books. You'll find all that on our website, thisweekinamerica.us. And we're back on today's program after these messages. You're listening to This Week in America with Rick Bratton. More after this.